What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 4 of the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019. Hopefully you guys are good and uh, well today to start things off I thought we'd take a look at team dynamics. Of course this season pretty much the entire first team including the players who were here before I signed them are new to the squad here at LAN FC and as a result the dynamics and hierarchy have kind of taken a little bit of time to really kind of find their bearing but you can now see on screen kind of where some of our players lie in terms of team leaders well the uh, go-to is Jeff Hughes of course the homegrown kid I say kid he's 33 years old now but of course started his career at LAN he's come in he's played eight games for us this year he's perhaps been a tad little bit disappointing but he really has become this figurehead in the team this player who people feel like they can go to in terms of highly influential players we have Michael Doherty here who is probably our third choice goalkeeper he's only got two years left on his current contract he does also double up as a coach for us which is quite nice although he isn't the craziest coach in the world but he has good determination good mentals and he is part of our ongoing tutoring and his experience is quite valuable I feel like to us and that's I guess why he's highly influential in terms of just influential players you can see uh, of course Mikel Lenny, uh, our club captain a player who really has been superb this year as is a standout player in the team. Behind him, we've got the likes of Stewart, Devlin, Eagles, McDade and Blanchard. Of course, all these players on the older end of things compared to a lot of our squad and with very good professional personalities. Uh, and, well, yeah, it's good to see. You can terms, see in terms of social group, team is still kind of trying to get together uh, in general. Atmosphere is getting good. Manager support is good. Match cohesion, still a little way to go, but you wouldn't know that based off the results since you were last here. Before we do go into that, though, one last signing we've made since last episode and a signing of note. Uh, I will say that throughout the first couple of months of the season, I have been continuing to sign players. But uh, with this guy, Idris Kaded, joining the club, I am drawing a line in the sand and saying no more players outside of our transfer restrictions. It turns out in Northern Ireland there isn't a summer transfer window. So as a result, it goes all the way through till March. So at the end of September, I kind of said in my head, you know what, that's the point where I'm going to draw the line. No more players who are over the age of 18 if they're from Britain or Ireland. And of course, if they are Northern Irish, we can sign them up to the age of 21. So this guy kind of marks a significant landmark for us in that regard. In terms of what he offers us, I feel like he's going to be a very, very good advanced playmaker option for us. It's a position we lack a lot of talent in. Really, Chris Eagle's the only natural player to slot in there. At 19 years old, he has some potential the Frenchman uh, you can see looking at his history he really has moved around a lot he's had a bit of a troubled career but with his one determination I'm hoping we're going to take him under our wing here at Lion FC and foster him into a very good talent because he has the potential to go quite far I feel like and uh, yeah as I said he's a good option uh, in the attacking midfielder position which is certainly a, an area of the park which we were lacking in over the course of course of this season we have signed a number of players. Uh, I think next episode I might go through our scouting setup, but I am weighing up perhaps doing some extra episodes alongside this series where we kind of just go into extra detail that I don't necessarily want to cover in the main series. For one of those, I was strongly considering just going through all the transfers we've made in detail, talking about obviously our youth setup in terms of players that we've got who are you know big players with big potential going forward. That is still something that we might do, I guess, in the not so distant future. One other little bit of news for you uh, LAN FC fans out there. Of course, Liam Hassin, a hot prospect in real life at the club. Um, I think he had tri trials at Rangers not that long ago, but unfortunately for us, he's broken his lower leg in the last month, which is pretty heartbreaking. I'm not going to lie. I was really hoping that we were going to be able to bring him through and see what he could do. He's kind of a hometown kid. Um, I know he plays quite regularly in the first team and is kind of highly thought of. Unfortunately for us here it's just not great. I'm hoping he can bounce back. He's only 17. Room for improvement for Liam. But unfortunately, right here and now, um, we're not going to see a bit much of him for the next six months or so. Anyway, to talk about the fixtures since you were last here, of course, last episode it was the game against Glen Torren, a 6-0 emphatic victory. Since then, four games, unbeaten, not flawless though. The first game we had against Dundella, uh, we won 3-1. A good little result this one. Dundella, bottom of the league, so it was going into this expecting us to perform well. And, um, well, the, the kids, they did all right, didn't they? Severio and Oddi were up top for us, starting alongside each other. And, uh, well, they, they linked up absolutely superbly. They got all three goals between them. Uh, they got a late goal, Dundella, which was only a consolation in the end. Bit of a shame that we couldn't hold on to the clean sheet. But regardless, 
Great performance, Severio getting Man of the Match, quickly becoming, I feel like, a little bit of a fan favourite early on in the series. Anyway, the next game against Portadown, an absolutely crazy game this one. Romario Vieira, I don't know what he had for breakfast, maybe it was Weetabix. He scored one of the best hat-tricks of long shots you're going to see in FM this year. Two goals in the first 10 minutes were, well, just too hot for the keeper to handle. And from there, we really made our dominance count. Porter Down did peg us back to make it 2-1, but, well, throughout the game, we were largely in control. Despite scoring six, we actually didn't have a single clear-cut chance, but we did dominate possession. We did create a lot of half chances, and we took those that came our way. And it really was a great team performance in this game. Tilney and Kebby at right-back and left-back, respectively, been performing superbly to start the season. And they were pretty spotless in this game. Again, Chris Eagles getting a goal. Thomas Stewart also getting on the score sheet. And while Vieira's last goal was probably the best of the bunch, it came in the 84th minute. An unlikely hat-trick goal scorer, I guess, from centre midfield. But, um, yeah, I really can't sing this guy's praises high enough. He has just been improving a lot. He isn't the most consistent of performers, but at 20 years old, plenty of room to improve. I'm really happy that we've got him locked down for the foreseeable future. You can see, looking at his contract, three years uh, long, and he's also got a two-year extension if and when we get promoted, I guess, which is absolutely superb to see. Anyway, in our next game, we took on Bali Keller Comrades, and this was a little bit of a... Um, uh, a little bit of a let-off, I guess you could say. We went 3-0 up in this game after 13 minutes, and I got a little complacent. I felt like we were, you know, dominating so comfortably it was in the bag, and it wasn't. Um, they got a goal back to make it 3-1 kind of fairly early on, actually, in the first half. They then pegged us back once more in the second, and squeaky bum time towards the end did kick in. But uh, we did hold on for what was a good little result. Stewart getting a brace. McDade also getting a goal for us. And I guess one of the big kind of takeaways from all these games is there's a real variety of goal scorers. Whilst Stewart and McDade, our main two strikers, have been putting in some great performances, you know, we've got plenty of players chipping in and contributing in the final third. Anyway, if that last game was a warning, the next game we, we ignored the warning further. It was Limavady United, and they scored two goals in the last seven minutes of the game. 2-0 um, up in this game going into the 87th minute. You'd think it was all over. It wasn't. Um, they did really, really well, to be honest. They got two goals. Danny Reed ultimately with the late, late goal for them in the 94th minute. The only real silver lining to take from this, I guess, whole thing or Severio lining, if you want to call it that, was a great goal by Danny. Um, it was a superb ball, I think, by Kebby from deep. Um, it, you've already seen it by now as I explain it, but it was absolutely superb. The finish on the volley, great. But yeah, not the best day at the office, you could say. Anyway, with those results done, you can see that we are currently top of the league. We're five points clear of Dergview. Then it's uh, Berlin and Mallard United. Porter Down, who were one of the big favourites to come up down in fifth. And, uh, well, you can see here the police service of Northern Ireland. Of course, the team who knocked us out of the cup uh, a couple of episodes ago now. They have, uh, well, started the season pretty well, you'd have to say. 14 points for them. But, uh, yeah, our goal difference, head and shoulders above everyone else's. You can see, if we just look at the overview for stats... Uh, 27 goals is the most by any team. We're creating uh, or completing the most crosses, completing the most passes, having the best average possession. We're really playing some attractive football, which is great to see. In terms of player overviews, you can see we don't have that many players appearing too high on the list. I guess Thomas Stewart with the average ratings, the one player of real note. But um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, we've just got a lot of players chipping in in the final third. You can see here McDade and Stewart with 14 goals between them. But then Severio, Vieira and Oddi, all three of them on four goals. Tilney at left back has three goals and four assists in 11 games. He's started the season just superbly. Unfortunately for us, you can see here Severio and Oddi both unavailable for today's games. They are playing for the Spanish under-21s, or rather under-19s, and uh, well, the Welsh under-19s respectively. So we're without two of our goal scorers, which is not ideal, but we'll try and make do. And uh, well, today we're not even competing in the league. You might have noticed it before. We are going to be taking on Coleraine uh, in the Northern Irish league cup third round it's away from home these are one of the big boys i mean you can look at the scout report here that we've got obviously they don't have a squad quite of the size of ours although ours is an exception rather than the rule here in ireland and uh, well you can see looking at this northern irish side they are predicted to finish sixth this year in the the premiership last year they finished second they also won silverware i do believe last year through i think it was the uh, irish football association challenge cup 
that they won last year. They did, yeah, 2018. So they've got a good team. They're not going to be easy for us. If we just look at the league table, you can see they're up in fourth. But they are behind Glen Torren, who we absolutely spanked last time out. So let's try and do that again, shall we? It's not going to be easy for us, but we'll see how we get on. In terms of the team for today's game, I didn't even notice this until now, but we can have a few extra players on the bench because of the uh, well, the cup rules, which is kind of nice. Uh, it means that we can bring in Cosgrove uh, and Liam Edwards, I think, into the team. But, um, well, the team as a whole has been performing really, really nicely, and we're going to stick with the team that's kind of just settled in now. Um, in terms of the team, we'll go through it today. Why not? We've got Connor, Connor Devlin, of course, in goal. Former club captain, still a hugely influential figure, it feels like, in our team. He's been great in goal thus far this season. Across the back three, we are going to go with Kelly at left centre-back. Uh, started the year as our more covering defender, um, but with Blanchard's performances being a little lacklustre and the fact he's left-footed, I've moved him to left centre-back, and that's been to accommodate Alex Evans in the centre-defensive uh, kind of covering position for us. He's been a real standout performer, a bit of a surprise package, really. Of course, McKelleny to their right completes our back three that are starting to gel quite nicely, which is great to see. I mentioned about Tilney and his goal-scoring exploits. They've been superb. I'm hoping we'll see more of them from him today. Uh, of course, he scored a very nice goal uh, last time out. Our right back, we, of course, go with Elliot Kebby. In the centre of the midfield, we are going to go with Hughes and Fuad Sul. Um, the reason for going with these guys really is that I trust their experience a little bit. That said, we have got Romario Vieira and also Carl Stewart on the bench. Vieira's kind of average ratings have just been crazy. You can see a 7.46 for him. Carl Stewart on the other high side of things, not quite hit the ground running just yet. But um, I'm confident he's going to step up for us when we need him to. And then in the final third, we go with our advanced playmaker, Chris Eagles, showing a few signs of decline, as is Hughes just behind him in centre mid. Going to be worth keeping an eye on that, of course. Both the players in their early 30s, so they are going to be losing their pace, um, which is why we play them down the middle like we do. But we do have to be wary of that. And when it comes to our strike pairing, we're going to go with the most lethal two of our strikers. It's going to be Thomas Stewart, who, as I've already talked about, one of the big performers in the league so far. And then alongside him, we're going to go with David McDade, who is our top league goal scorer. He has six goals to his name and two assists in eight matches. So he is looking very, very solid there. Anyway, let's submit our team for today's game. We're taking on Coleraine. It's not going to be easy, but I want to stick with the game that we know. I want to play on the front foot, positive football. In terms of their team, they are going to play a 4-2-3-1. Uh, interestingly enough, they've got a couple of regens here who I'm not that familiar with, so we'll get scout reports on them. Uh, of course, with this series, I did kind of tick the box to add young players to playable teams just to give us um, you know, more fleshed-out squads here in Northern Ireland. Uh, and that does also mean there's been an emergence of some real talent early on, which I think is going to make things interesting. You know, Given the transfer stipulations we're under, we're going to be looking to try and sign some of the best young Northern Irish players, and there seems to be plenty of them going around. It's going to be down to us to, I guess, find the real diamonds out there uh, over the next few years. But regardless, let's get into this game against Coleraine. As I said, they are a very good team. They finished second in the league last year. They are not going to be pushovers. I'm not going to kid myself. I'm not going into this expecting another 6-1 result. But um, we're going to give it our all. Of course, we've not lost in 90 minutes so far this season. We did lose after extra time to the police service of Northern Ireland in the Cup. But um, yeah, unbeaten in the league after nine. Only that one defeat to speak of optimistic that hopefully going into this game we're going to be able to, well, give them a good game. That's going to be the aim as Coleraine, an early chance. A bending free kick. That was a long, long way out that he tried to hit it in from, but it was not a bad effort. You can see here, looking at the average ratings early on, nothing really of note happening just yet. We are having significantly more of the ball, which is great to see, but it's what you do with the ball. And thus far, uh, well, all the highlights we've seen have been Coleraine on the attack. Can we defend here? King bringing it forward, deflected rather generous, generously into the path of Parkill, who probably should have done better with the chance that came his way, but it's squandered. I mean, 20 minutes gone. I can only be positive, I guess, with how we've started this match. It's been pretty solid. 64% of the ball. We've limited them to just that one shot on target. We just need to create a little bit more ourselves. That's got to be the aim now as we head towards half-time. Tilney, out on this left-hand side, tries to thread a rather ambitious ball forward, but does win the ball back high up the pitch. Options in the middle, whips it in. Cleared away only as far as Sull. Kebby hits it. The right-back might get another bite of the cherry. He does get another bite of the cherry. It's his first goal of the season. 
And, uh, well, we talked about Tilney out on the left-back position getting goals. Now it's Kebby's turn to shine. You felt when the first shot was saved, maybe that was the opportunity gone. But he was the fastest to react. Uh, Fuad with a lovely ball there. Kebby's first effort was lethal. The rebound, unstoppable. Two defenders just couldn't react to cover him in time. Used that pace and athleticism that he has to get into position. And, well, a lovely little finish by him into that near post sees us go a goal up here although Coleraine they are going to want to bounce back here they are going to want to well get back into this game quickly oh my gosh that was not far away who was that I think it was actually who was that for them I'm not even sure it was one hell of an effort I think it might have been their left back Mullen a warning shot certainly it's going to be 1-0 at half time which is a good performance but we do need to keep it going. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. Just because for all the dominance we've had, we've not been at our best. And, well, as the second half went on, or rather as the first half went on, um, they did kind of get into that game a little bit more. So I'm looking for us in this second half just to hopefully get another goal, get a bit more comfortable if we can. But we do need to remain, well, solid at the back. I feel like a few games ago, I probably would have praised to the players for the first half performance. But after, well, the complacency we've shown in our last two league games, I'm not going to risk it if I can avoid it. As Kebby has another shot. It's another goal for him. Tilney with the assist. I mean, our wing-backs are on fire. Elliot Kebby, you beautiful man. You see the ball built up nicely here by Hughes. Tilney takes it on his weaker foot, switches the play. Kebby, half volley. I mean, we've got the best wing-backs in the league, folks. They're superb. I don't know what to say. was not expecting that to go flying in in that nature. And while we get that goal cushion that we craved, the aim of this competition is to reach the semi-final this year. This was a very tough draw to get in the third round. Make no mistake, this would be a great result if we could hold on for the win here, but you have to expect Cole Rain to step it up as this game goes on. We won the ball back well there, but give it away immediately. They're now going to try and bring it forward, potentially. Goes inside to Whiteside, edge of the box. Might have an effort. He does. Inches over the crossbar. I don't know if Devlin had it covered. I'm going to claim that he did. And well, another chance here. Kebby on for a hat-trick. Not something I thought I'd say at the start of this episode when I hit record. But yeah, he's been great so far for us. Can we, well, regroup here? King, clean through. Should score, does not. What was... Was that a cross? I don't think it was a shot. Either way, McElhinney has got the ball. Now with Kelly, who's dwelling on it a little bit, but, well, looking for the opportunity. I shouldn't use the word dwelling. He was patient, and now we spring in with pace. McDade to Sull. What a goal that is. That is beautiful, beautiful football to make it 3-0 here. Just really nicely worked. Coleraine tried to press, press up high, tried to catch us out, and, well, we carved them open. Chris Eagles, lovely ball forward. McDade... You thought he might aim for the back post for the striker partner in Stewart. He didn't. Instead, he pulled it back to the penalty spot. He's tucked away. And, uh, well, 3-0. We are looking very, very good here right now. Kebby, man of the match for me. I, I kind of want us to get a penalty to give him the best chance of getting the hat-trick. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to take off Thomas Stewart. And I'm actually going to bring in Kadad. Let's see what he can do. It's going to be his live commentary debut. He did come off the bench in our last league game, but didn't really make a great deal of impact on the game. Let's see what he can do today. The the last of a, a dying breed. He's like the last of the dinosaurs, really. The last player we'll ever sign um, from outside of the UK and Ireland. It's part of this series. As Alex Evans gets his first goal of the season. That's what I want to see, Alex. A work-the-space legend, the Welshman. And, uh, well, he's got a beautiful little goal for us there. McElhinney nods it down and, well, to his centre-back partner who hits it. I think that might be on his weaker left foot. But regardless, a bit of ricocheting off the defenders did not stop it from hitting the back of the net. Evans can be happy with that. And, well, you can see, just looking at the ratings, we are looking solid. Just a few minutes left in this game. I'm going to make a double change. I'm going to bring in Carl Stewart and um, Vieira. Just give them a little bit of time just to stretch their legs for the last five or so minutes. Still looking for the Kebby hat-trick if we can get it. Evans has scored again. Chris Eagles with it. I mean, I wonder what odds you would have got on two defenders to get braces in this game. If, in, if this was a real game. I don't think it would have been that high. Eagles, what a ball of quality that is. Alex Evans, lovely header to the back post. Really showing why he's broken into our team. Uh, as I said, you know, he's kind of replaced Blanchard, but, well, with contributions like that, not why, why I've been including him, but certainly making a case to keep him in the first team now. He's been great defensively. This has been the, 
the the birth of offensive uh, Alex Evans. It feels like with our centre backs, the goals for them come in pairs. Not that I'm going to complain one little bit. That is going to be all she wrote. 5 0. I said at kickoff, I'm not going to expect another 6 1. It's pretty blooming close, isn't it? You can see here, uh, we were predicting a win, but we're not expecting us to win by that margin. Our system just seems to be working really, really well right, right now, which is just super, super pleasing to be able to say. Um, and hopefully we can keep it going. We're going on uh, into the fourth round of the competition. Kebby, man of the match, I'm going to. I'm just going to praise him. Fair play, son. Uh, one thing that did happen a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if I still have the news item, I don't, is uh, Brexit has been confirmed to be happening in the save, of course. In Football Manager, Brexit happens. The conditions of Brexit change from save to save. I don't know what the rule changes are going to be yet, of course, with the way that we're approaching the save game. It's not going to have a massive impact on us, I don't think, but it will be worth to keeping a tab on that, you know, just keeping an eye on it and seeing what kind of comes about as a result of uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, leaving the European Union. Uh, but that's something we can worry about for next time. With that result, we go marching on. And, uh, well, in terms of when we'll be back next, I think we're going to be back for the Ballymella United game. It's the County Antrim Sh Shield semi-final. A massive game for us to try and win. It's going to be at a neutral ground as well at the Oval, which I guess is one of the bigger Northern Irish stadiums. That's a big occasion for us. It's going to be a midweek game. Hopefully, we can go marching on into the final. Ballymena United, not a bad team. They're fifth in the Premiership. Of course, that's the kind of position where I'd like us to be striving for as a minimum aim next year. Given the fact that we are now limited with the players that we can sign, we're not really going to be adding many more players. So, realistically, I really want to see us give Ballymena United a real run for their money uh, next time out. And, well, hopefully, you guys will be around to see that. Anyway, that is going to wrap up everything from me today, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy this episode as always. If you did, a like would be super appreciated on the video. Massive thank you to all my Patreons uh, for your ongoing support. Really do appreciate that as well. And, uh, well, of course, hopefully I will see you guys on the next one. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.